everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Just got back from Vegas, round two. Went to Evo, had a blast. Wonderful to meet all of you. I drove directly from there to here to do this. I feel like that's worth a like or a comment or a subscription or sharing. I'm gonna do it up. I'm gonna do it up front because I got you. I got you now. If I had to, if I had to sit in traffic, you got to sit through this. Today in the news, it finally looks like we're getting our Red Dead re-release. Except it's not a remaster, and it's not a remake. In a new conversation by Double Eleven Studios, the Switch and PS4 versions bring the two classic experiences together again for both new players and original fans to enjoy across modern consoles, including backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 5. The conversion release will also include Undead Nightmare, Red Dead Redemption's horror-themed expansion. And while the port will be available digitally as of August 17th, it will be receiving a physical release later this year on October 13th. And now some of you might be wondering, but Jesse, what about the Xbox version? Surely they would release an Xbox version. Well, uh, they don't need to because the 360 version of the game is backwards compatible on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox One. So it already exists. And so that feeling you're probably feeling right now, the same one that I'm feeling is kind of like, okay, cool. It's a lackluster announcement. I would expect more considering all the hype and build up around a remake or a remaster. Nothing, nothing. It's just something akin to Grand Theft Auto or Skyrim, or any of those games that they're just like, what if we released it some more? In fact, it's already being lampooned online as such. And look, we all know that Rockstar has had its <laughs> rough bout of ports lately with the remastered Grand Theft Auto trilogy not doing all that well. And now it looks like instead of just trying to remake or remaster this one, they're choosing the simplest, least expensive version of that. And I don't know. I don't know if there's anything here that's gonna grab people that they wouldn't just go play the second one. I guess we'll find out together. Speaking of me <laughs> never truly understanding the games industry, Square Enix has announced that Final Fantasy 16 did well or didn't do well or... <sighs> I don't know. According to Video Games Chronicle, the publisher reported its quarter two 2023 earnings on Friday, during which it stated that revenue had increased around 14% year on year, but profits had dropped around 65%. Bloomberg also claims that one of the reasons for Square Enix's underwhelming financials is the launch of Final Fantasy 16. The publication cites three separate sources who attended Square Enix's post earnings call, all of whom claimed President Takashi Kiryu said the game's initial sales, in Bloomberg's words, did not meet the high end of the company's expectations. And if you're like, wait a minute, Jesse, didn't they just say a few weeks ago that it was doing great and was a success and they were very proud? Uh, yeah, thanks for paying attention, but yeah, they definitely did. Just last month, Square Enix was praising the game's success for reaching 3 million copies sold just within the first week of its release. Put that in perspective, Final Fantasy 16's release sales were roughly in line with those of Final Fantasy VII Remakes at launch, which managed around 3.5 million copies in 10 days, albeit on PS4, which had a larger installed base. So let me repeat that again. Final Fantasy VII launched on PS4. It had a huge install base. Final Fantasy 16 launched on PS5, not as many PS5 owners. And still, it did roughly the same. It did 3 million in seven days versus 3.5 in 10. Sounds good to me. I think the thing that's happening here before people get all like, what the hell is going on? Which I had that a little bit at first, but it, I, I thought about it. And I think I've come to the conclusion that what they're saying is, we did not reach our top end, what we wanted, the highest point of the amount of money that we wanted to make. That is a statement they made. But I also think in an earnings report, you need to factor in the costs for promotion and sales and uh, all the ad buys and all of the brand integrations and all the different things they're doing with this in order to promote it. And that's a loss, right? They're spending a ton of money to do that. And so when a big game like this comes out, every time a Final Fantasy game comes out, they put stuff everywhere. If you're in a major city, you're going to see Final Fantasy something. They made a giant ass sword and put it in the Tower of London, right? You know, they had their own event, their launch event at, you know, Key 3, and they did that whole thing. I think a lot of money was spent in publicity and promotion, and that's something they're factoring into it. They're like, look, we're making money over here, but we're, you know, we're also spending a lot of money over here. And that's probably the reason why, which I think goes back to 
another statement they made where they're saying, look, we are going to focus on big budget games now. We're not gonna do the, the tiny ones anymore. We're not gonna do the smaller scope games. We're talking big, crazy games now. And I think that's probably where they should have been because everyone loves Square Enix's like epic, insane games. And they produce all these other games which are good, but don't really have an audience. And I'm sure money's going there as well. And I think this is all factoring into their thinking about like what kind of company are we? And honestly, I hope they figure it out because <laughs> For the last couple of years, they've been all over the place when really their bread and butter has been Final Fantasy, has been RPGs, has been like Dragon Quest, has been all these different things they really should just start making again on a level that's just like, we're doing it every five years. Here's a new one and a new one. And just saying, they could and they probably should, but we will see. Let me know what you think down below, please. I would love to know your thoughts on this because it's always funny to me when Square's like, guys, money, am I right? <laughs> They always have the weirdest takes. But anyway, it's Monday, so that means it's time for new releases. What do you get when you combine a pixelated RPG with wrestling? You get Mega Cat Studios Wrestle Quest, which releases on August 8th. Lace up your tiny wrestling boots and prepare to punch and pile drive your way to the pixelated top by mastering a myriad of moves, gaining inspiration from famous wrestlers and more. I could never have imagined a turn-based RPG mixed with wrestling, but I've played it, <laughs> it's a delight, and you all gotta check out WrestleQuest when it comes out tomorrow. Then on Thursday, Stray Gods, the role-playing musical finally releases, set in a modern day world of gods and monsters. Players take on the role of Grace, who is tasked with solving the murder of Calliope, the last muse. Throughout the game, you'll not only make narrative choices that advance and change the story, but you'll also be able to choose and influence the music that Grace sings. And speaking of singing, Stray Gods features a robust cast of highly talented voice actors and singers. So if you like Greek mythology, you love musicals, you love narrative gameplay, do not pass on. <laughs> Another game I've had the pleasure of playing, Stray Gods. Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks so much, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.